This guide has been sponsored by Warhammer 40k Darktide. Alright, so I'm going to show you some useful gameplay tips that you may not know just yet. If you haven't picked up Dark Tide, but you're still watching this anyways, I put a link to snag it on PC down in the description. And hey, if you want more Dark Tide, hit subscribe. First up, some melee weapons when being charged up for a heavy attack will make your character slow down pretty drastically, which can somewhat limit their rushdown potential. However, if you perform a slide by sprinting and crouching, followed by immediately holding down left click, you can avoid that slower movement penalty and be charging up heavy strikes while keeping up your speed. Now this next one is more of something to consider. You might be into it, you might not be. So which button are you spamming the most in this probably? It's likely left click. You can actually remap your tag button to be left click as well, so that you're a vital UAV spotter for the entire team. As you're naturally attacking, you'll also be automatically highlighting elite enemies buried far away in large packs before you even actually have eyeballs on them. Your psychers will greatly appreciate that along with the rest of your team. Next, here is a very important hidden modifier for the Zealot Preacher's main ability, Chastise the Wicked. This is what shooting normally on a fully armored big boy does. Not very effective, is it? However, a few seconds after activating Chastise the Wicked, while the edges of your screen are glowing, all of your gun damage will fully pierce armor. If a high carapist armor enemy heads your way, your team's zealot preacher should step up and pop this ability to quickly chew through their defenses. Next, I personally despise putting my gun away empty, because then when I switch over to it when I need it the most, it's empty and I need to reload it like a reject reject. But there is a slightly quicker way to refill your weapons and then swap to your offhand. During your reload animation, as soon as you see the ammo counter switch to full, you can immediately cancel the remainder of the fancy reload animation by switching to your offhand. That still counts as a full reload, and this is more useful the slower the reload of your weapon is. Alright, so you let a pox burster get too close, and you're presented with this situation. What do you do? A. Explode it in your face. B. Curl up and weep. C. Pretend you were AFK and then blame Jeff. Or D. A blocking pushback followed by a dodge backwards. You are correct. D. It was. If a burster is doing its last second jump towards you and you have no other options, you can do a blocking pushback while they're in midair. That should buy you just enough time if you immediately dodge backwards, hopefully avoiding that explosive damage. Next, the Ogren's main ability, Bull Rush, and the Zealot Preacher's Chastise the Wicked are great at staggering and interrupting incoming attacks. For example, a grumpy pupper is about to pounce you or is already on a teammate. Just pop one of those abilities towards them to interrupt their action and save yourself or your friend. Also, if someone is lucky enough to bask in the Beast of Nurgle's glorious belly meat, you can forcibly trigger it to spit them out early by inflicting stagger. Ogren's bull rush, a grenade, or a barrel will all be effective at doing that. Next, snipers tend to want to drastically modify your character's face, but there is a way to consistently avoid their shots. As soon as you see this flash from their gun or hear this sound, immediately input a dodge to the left or right to avoid being hit. You might want to make sure your sound effects are much higher than the music or voiceover because sound cues are massively important in this. Now if you're having some regrets after picking up a grimoire which lowers your team's maximum health, you can switch over to wielding it and hold down left click to dispel its constant effect. This will probably grump your team if they didn't agree to this though. Next, the large power cells you'll need to carry around for certain mission types or to repair a health station will slow down the movement of any regular sized puny humans. The big ogre in though can move around nearly unimpeded while carrying those things, so assign them to your manual labor. 
Also, you can shortcut these canisters up to certain higher platforms by jumping and throwing them. This can save you a lot of time and works even better if a teammate is up there to snag them out of midair. Now for this one, if you're struggling at taking down the high armored carapace enemies, consider a weapon or ability that does electric. This hammer, for example, has a special action that imbues its next attack with electricity, which does huge damage to these enemies that are covered in all metal. Next, make sure you know what your melee weapon type is actually doing. Strike down is the spiky circle symbol, which is usually a vertical swinging strong single target hit, often good at staggering. Assassin is the symbol with a blade with four angles coming off of it, which is a fast single target strike which is extra effective when used on weak spots. Relentless is the symbol of three arrows, which is a wide horizontal swing that is good at staggering large groups of enemies. And Vanguard is the blade with a slash coming off of it, which is a fairly well-rounded strike hitting multiple enemies with solid damage. If you want to avoid certain strikes in a combo sequence, you can tap block to reset it back to the first hit. Next up, be fearful of this sound. This is a demon host, and make sure not to shoot at it or get too close, or you will agitate it. If someone gets downed during this encounter, the demon host will be able to gruesomely kill you off Vecna style regardless of the number of segments on your health bar. When you're back in the town hub, each time new contracts load up for you, you get one free reroll of any that you don't want to do. You can continually reroll these, but the price will incrementally rise each time. Now, are you about to steal some ammo? Well, take a glance down at these icons by your teammates first, which shows you a little ammo symbol if they need ammo more than you do. A white symbol means they're good on ammo, a yellow symbol means they kinda need ammo, orange means they really need ammo, and red means they immediately need violence fuel. There's actually a built-in penalty for spamming the dodge button over and over. It eventually gets to where you're not moving much at all, so give that button a few seconds of rest to reset it. Your dodge distance and its effectiveness is based off your weapon's mobility stat. In the main hub town's shop, you can't sell any items here, but in your own inventory, you can discard any unwanted weapons or trinkets. Depending on its rarity and level, you get some money back when you discard it. The veteran sharpshooter's grenades don't do too much to these shielded guys if you chuck the grenade right straight at them. But if you just toss it a little off to the side or behind them, that will knock them down completely. That gives you or your teammates an easy opening to finish them off. If your weapon has a special action attack, but you're not too sure how it differs from your main attacks, Hit inspect on the weapon in your inventory, then view attack breakdowns, followed by clicking on its special action. This will reveal exactly what type of damage it does and what it's best used for. This simple punch is strong in stagger and is surprisingly good at knocking targets down. When playing as the Psyker, quelling your peril with your hands while in brain burst mode makes you pretty much slow down to a crawl. So when playing this class, it's important to have at least one weapon with a high quell speed, like a staff. This allows you to regularly remove your peril faster and lets you move around quicker while doing so. And last, knowing when you're in coherency of your teammates, meaning in close proximity, is important for regenerating your toughness gauge and it synergizes with many character traits. To know exactly for sure if you're in the range of this, look for this symbol down in the bottom left, and if it has a 2, 3, or 4 on it, that is how you know you're close enough to a teammate to activate coherency. The default distance seems to be about from here to here, or roughly 5 micro ogrins. So those are just some of the gameplay tips I had for you today. 
but I need to know the stuff that you figure out, so shoot it down in the comments if you have any good tricks you come up with, and I'll go in there and give it a try. Now a big shout out to Fat Shark for sponsoring this video. And if you watched all this but don't own Dark Tide or have a few buddies you're trying to bring in, use the link I have in the description to get it or gift it to someone on Steam. As always, I'm Alex, good luck out there, and thanks for watching.